friends good morning in this session let me explain the fundamentals of springs later on we will move on to the the design procedure to be followed in designing different varieties of springs so you might have seen different type of springs different varieties of springs in different applications in your real life right you might have seen a spring used in our ball point pen or a spring used in the shock absorbers of uh, automobile spring used in the wrist watches springs used in the trucks of four wheeler or the springs used in the clips or the springs used in the vibrators right so all these are the mechanical elements which are subjected to elastic deformation you might have studied the property elasticity in our mechanics of solids elasticity is the property by which of which by virtue of which it can regain its original shape and size after the removal of load is it right so here once the load is removed the member regains its original shape and size that is the property of an elastic member so here spring is also an elastic body a spring is also an elastic member so a spring is defined as an elastic body whose function is to distort when loaded and to recover its original shape when the load is removed it distorts when the load when the load is applied and re recover its original shape when the load is removed so the spring is subjected to the deformation what type of deformation is uh, produced in the springs it is only temporary deformation when the load is removed so its size and shape is similar to the the size and shape of the original body or the original object that's what an elastic body so here the spring is also same right you might have seen the spring used in our ball point pen once the knob is pressed the spring gets compressed and when the knob once again press it regains its uh, original size the compression disappears or the contraction disappears and it regains its original length okay so these springs are used in wide varieties of applications particularly in the machines or the mechanical members so this spring is having different functions in different applications okay so that's why we need to discuss the functions of these springs in detail based on that we can consider different types of springs let me explain the basic functions of springs basic functions of springs so there are uh, five functions firstly to cushion absorb or control energy due to either shock or vibrations to cushion to absorb or to control energy due to either shock or vibration so as in the case of uh, core springs or shock absorbers of automobiles or 
the springs used in vibration dampers. In all these cases, the springs acts as either to provide cushioning or either to absorb the energy or either to control the energy. So this is <coughs> the function of a spring in the core springs, shock absorbers and vibration dampers. In core springs, the spring provides the cushioning to the, the members in the car. The spring used in the two-wheeler absorbs the shocks when it is entering to the peaks or uneven surface. Similarly, the spring used in the vibration dampers controls the energy. Right, so this is the first function of a spring. And when you look at the spring used in your brakes, clutches, or spring loaded walls, you might have seen walls, uh, spring loaded walls in our IC engines, or you might have seen brakes, or you might have seen clutches. In all these cases, the spring is for supplying member, spring access for supplying member. So, the second function is spring is used to apply forces. To apply forces. What are all the applications here with respect to this function? Brakes, clutches, and spring loaded walls of an IC engine. And the third function is it controls the motion. The spring controls. Spring is used to control the motion by maintaining contact between the two elements. The best example for this is the cam and follower. Or the cams and followers used in the machinery. So the movement of uh, or the deflection of spring gives the movement to this uh, cam and follower assembly. So that means it is simply controlling the motion of these two elements. So that's why the spring is used here to control the motion, right? And the fourth one is the spring used in our spring balance. What is the function of a spring in spring balance? It is to measure the magnitude of force. The spring used to measure the magnitude of forces. And the best example for this uh, function is the spring used in our spring balances. Similarly, the spring used in the engine indicators also to measure the forces. And fifth one is to store the energy. The springs also use it to store the energy. This energy is called strain energy. This energy is called strain energy. The energy absorbed by the member during straining, during deformation is called strain energy, right? So now the, the spring is used to store the energy and this energy is used to do some other work. So the best example for this, uh, uh, function is the spring used in the watches, spring used in our uh, toys, etc. Right? So you might have seen toys with the keys. Right? So once the key is released, the toy takes the uh, respective motions. Right? Because it is stored with certain amount of energy when the spring gets strained or when the spring gets deformed and this energy is utilized for further work right so these five are the functions of springs right first one is to provide a cushioning or to control the energy or to absorb the energy 
right? The best examples for this is core spring, shock absorbers, and vibration dampers. And the second function is to apply forces. What are the applications here? Clutches, brakes, and the spring loaded walls of an IC engine are the best examples uh, for uh, spring gas. Uh, a force applier. And the next one is to control the motion as in the case of cam and follower. And the fourth one is to measure the forces as in the case of uh, a spring balance. Right? And the fifth function is the spring access energy storage device. And the stored energy can be further utilize to do certain type of work right so these are the functions of springs next one classification of springs classification of springs so there are different varieties of springs as i said earlier there are wide range of uh, applications for each and every type of spring Right, so the first and foremost spring, which is having a or which is most widely used in the mechanical elements, is the helical spring. Helical spring. So the spring used in our ballpoint pen is the best example for the helical spring. Now the spring used in our two-wheeler shock absorbers is the best example for helical spring. You might have done the experiment on uh, uh, spring testing machine, right? To find out or uh, to know the different properties of uh, materials in our mechanics of solid slab, right? So uh, the helical spring is generally made up of a wire, right? So a wire is coiled in the form of a helix. A wire is coiled in the form of helix and is primarily intended for compressive or tensile loads, is known as helical spring. Right? So it is generally made up of a wire. A wire is wounded in the form of a helix, or you can simply keep a wire on the circumference of a cylinder, then you will get a helical spring. These helical springs are generally designed for either compressive loads or tensile loads. Right? So, as I said earlier, the helical spring is generally made up of a wire. And this wire may be of varieties of cross section, generally either circular cross section wire or a square cross section wire or sometimes a rectangular cross-section wire, right? So, here we have two types of uh, diameters in the helical spring uh, nomenclature. One is the wire diameter, other one is the coil diameter. Coil is formed when it is bound around the cylindrical surface in the form of a helix, right? So these helical springs are generally of uh, two types based on the, the load to which it is subjected. The compressive helical spring and the tension helical spring, right? Compression helical spring and tension helical spring. So in the case of compression helical spring, initially the coils are uh, spreaded and the coils are not in contact with each other. The coils are distanced with some amount of gap. And when the load, the compressive load is applied, and the coils are in contact with each other, and all the coils are come closer to each other. Right? So likewise, you will get the deflection of spring or the straining of the spring, thereby the function of the spring is fulfilled. And Second one is a tensile helical spring. Initially, the coils are in contact with each other, like uh, the spring used in our ball point, sorry, spring used in our spring balance, 
it is a tensile helical spring okay when the load is applied the coils are subjected to the elongation obviously the contact between the adjacent coils disappears okay so look at the figures of this uh, compression and tensile helical spring this is the tensile helical spring this is the compression helical spring there is a gap between the coils the adjacent coils of the spring when the load is applied then these coils come close to each other these coils come close to each other and contact with each other then the corresponding contraction or the deflection takes place and the second one is a tensile helical spring right so this is uh, the spring used in our spring balance when you apply load here and here this is the supporting uh, end when you apply the load at this end the coils are displaced or the coils are subjected to the deflection and it is subjected to the elongation thereby the contact between the adjacent coils disappears okay so it is subjected to the elongation right so this is tensile helical spring and this is called a compression helical springs and this tensile and compression helical springs also known as closely coiled helical spring and open coiled helical springs respectively since the coils are closely packed are in contact with each other hence the tensile helical spring is also known as close coiled helical spring whereas the coils in the compression helical springs are having some gaps or uh, there is no contact between any two adjacent coils the coils are free to uh, open that's why this spring is also known as open coil helical spring right so we will discuss these two in detail when the spring wire is coiled so close that the plane containing each turn is nearly at right angles to the axis of the helix and the wire is subjected to torsion so in the case of close coil helical spring the spring wire is coiled so close to the plane containing each turn that means the plane of each coil is exactly perpendicular to the spring axis or is exactly right angles to the axis of the helix or the axis of the spring and here the wire is generally subjected to torsional loading right so in the case of close coil helical spring since the coils are very much close to each other in contact with each other hence the helix angle is very very small and it is usually less than 10 degrees right whereas in the case of uh, open coil helical springs the helix angle is a bit larger when it is compared with the helix angle of close coil helical spring right so the major stresses produced in this type of uh, close coil helical springs are shear stresses because the spring is subjected to torsion or twisting which induces shear stress the load applied is generally parallel to or along the axis of the spring the load applied is either along the axis of the spring or parallel to the axis of the spring like eccentric loads okay so whereas in the case of open coiled helical spring the spring wire is coiled in a such a way that there is a gap between two consecutive or adjacent tones as a result of which the helix angle is a bit larger okay so this is uh, the subclassification of uh, the first type of spring helical spring okay so these springs are having uh, a comparatively large large number of advantages uh, when it is uh, compared with the other types of springs right so we'll let me explain these advantages uh, 
one by one. So the helical springs are very much easier to manufacture. The first one is the helical springs are very much easier to manufacture. Okay, so and these there are a wide range of uh, manufacturing process or methods to manufacture helical springs. Okay, so these are available in wide ranges. The helical springs are available in wide ranges right so that means uh, circular cross section uh, coil helical springs right and the helical springs of uh, spire cross section wire like this of uh, different sizes so that means there are a wide number of uh, helical springs okay so the reliability of these helical springs a bit more uh, compared with the uh, reliability of other types of uh, springs okay and the fourth one is uh, these have a constant spring rate constant spring rate uh, spring rate or spring constant uh, i think you know the spring rate or the constant uh, it is nothing but simply a spring stiffness right so stiffness is load required for unit deflection or load required for unit rate of deformation right so amount of load required to deflect the spring for one unit is called spring stiffness or spring rate or spring constant so these helical springs generally have a constant spring rate and there is no uh, very very uh, variable spring rate values for the helical springs okay and the performance of these helical springs can also be predicted more accurately than the performance of other types of springs because of its uh, simple uh, construction right so the characteristics of these helical springs also can be varied by changing the dimensions of these springs okay so this uh, these are the advantages of uh, helical springs advantages of helical springs okay next one is conical and volute springs okay so these are uh, conical and volute springs are having special applications like a telescopic spring or a spring with the spring rate that increases with the load as you go on increasing the load the spring rate also increases that is the advantage of the conical spring so this conical springs generally uh, finds applications in the vibrators used in our uh, uh, concrete uh, uh, structure making okay in order to avoid the air gaps in the concrete uh, concrete surfaces the vibrators are moved slowly uh, like you might have seen uh, the cement road uh, cement roads making of cement roads or even uh, making of slabs civil structures the vibrators are moved slowly after the the concrete is poured onto the surface so the air gaps entrapped in this uh, concrete mixtures uh, are can be uh, removed easily with the vibrations caused by this vibrators so that uh, vibratory motion is attained by providing this type of uh, conical springs okay so the conical spring is uh, similar to your uh, helical spring but it is wound in the form of uh, a cone shape right a conical spring is wound with a uniform pitch whereas the volute springs are wound in the form of a paraboloid if you wound a helical spring in the form of a cone then it is called a conical spring and if you wound a helical spring in the form of a paraboloid then it is known as a volute spring or wound in the form of a paraboloid with the constant pitch and lead angles right 
So the major stresses produced in follicle and volute springs are also shear stresses due to twisting. Since the wire is subjected to twisting uh, during its uh, making, the shear stresses are induced and when the load is applied, then also it exhibits a shear stresses. Then the third type of spring is a torsion spring. Right, you might have seen uh, this type of spring in the clips of uh, your writing pads, right? So this torsion spring may be of a helical type or spiral type, right? So the spiral type of torsion springs you might have seen in the uh, key watches, right? So helical uh, type may be used to only in the applications where the load tends to wind the spring, wind up the spring, and are used in various electrical mechanisms, right? And uh, what type of stresses are produced in these uh, torsion springs? Generally, these torsion springs are subjected to either tensile or compressive stresses due to its bending. If you look at the pictorial representation of a uh, torsion spring, you can understand what type of stresses are induced during its uh, uh, straining or the deformation. And this is helical type of uh, torsion spring and this is the spiral type of torsion spring. Right? So this uh, type of uh, springs you might have seen uh, in the tips of writing pads and this type of uh, torsion spring you might have seen in the this one uh, key watches right once the key is given the number of windings increases and clump close to each other right when the key is released slowly the spring uh, subjected to the um, releasing of uh, energy slowly uh, the strain strain disappears the spiral type is also used where the load tends to increase number of coils and when generally these spiral springs generally made up of uh, a flat strip uh, whereas this uh, uh, helical type of torsion springs generally made up of uh, a circular wire like uh, helical springs right so this flat strip uh, torsion springs or the spiral type of springs generally used in the watches and clacks right and the fourth varieties of uh, springs is the laminated or lap leaf spring laminated or leaf spring this spring is also known as a laminated spring since number of uh, flat strips are laminated uh, as a single unit that's why it is also known as a laminated spring and these uh, flat strips also uh, known as uh, leaves that's why this spring is also known as a leaf spring, right? A laminated or leaf spring, also known as a flat spring or carry spring, generally consists of number of flat plates or also known as leaves of varying lengths held together by means of a clamp or bolt at the center. The Detailed construction of these laminated or leaf springs will be discussed in the subsequent classes. So, these the application of this laminated or leaf spring generally in the automobiles. You might have seen trucks, right? So, the back axle of the truck is generally provided, or the axles of the automobile uh, provided with these leaf springs, right? This you can easily observe in the back axles. You can clearly identify this even in the tractors, right? So it is just like a, a bow shape, right? When the load is applied in the trucks, these springs gets deflected. That means the curvature initially provided in this. Uh, plastics and this curvature disappears when the load is applied and when the load is uh, removed once again it regains to its original shape that means uh, a flat plate with the curvature okay so the 
when it comes to the stresses induced in this laminated or leaf springs these are the tensile and compressive stresses okay so torsion springs and laminated springs are subjected to tensile and compressive stresses whereas uh, the previous uh, first two varieties helical springs uh, conical springs and volute springs are subjected to uh, shear stresses due to torsion right let us uh, have a look on this uh, uh, the say line diagram of this leaf spring leaf spring generally provide with a number of flat plates usually uh, provide with a big amount of curvature and these plates are bundled together or held together by means of the central bolt and this uh, entire unit is placed on the axles right and on the top of it uh, the truck is placed when the load is applied on the trucks this uh, curvature disappears this curved uh, strips becomes uh, flat and when the load is removed once again uh, the curvature comes into the picture that's what uh, happening in the functioning of the laminated or leaf spring anyway we will see this uh, in detail manner in the coming classes and uh, special varieties of uh, variety of spring is uh, disc or bellevelle spring this is these springs generally consists of a number of uh, conical disc held together by means of a central bolt against uh, slipping right so these springs are generally used in applications where high spring rates and uh, compact uh, spring units are required right so due to the space restrictions some of the applications that requires high spring rates within the uh, limited space in such cases you can go for uh, bellevelle springs or the uh, disc springs right so this uh, type of uh, bellevelle springs are uh, generally subjected to tensile and compressive stresses uh, as in the case of uh, uh, laminated spring so this is a disc type of uh, uh, member and this is another disc which is uh, uh, placed in opposite uh, orientation and all these uh, discs or the conical plates are held together by means of a central bolt and along the axis then it acts as a spring because here there is a gap between the adjacent uh, conical plates right when the load is applied all these uh, conical discs are uh, subjected to the deformation thereby the curvature or the concavity provided in the surface of this disc disappears it will become a flat plate and when the load is removed once again once again it regains its original shape uh, likewise you will get the the spring action in the case of uh, bellevelle springs okay then apart from these varieties of springs there are certain uh, special purpose springs which are generally used uh, in specific applications like uh, uh, liquid springs rubber springs uh, ring springs uh, Right, so the, these are all the special varieties of springs. So these are uh, designed for special functions. All right. Then <coughs> material for the helical springs. Right, the selection of uh, uh, material for the helical springs. Okay, so. Uh, let me explain uh, the terminology and the design procedure of uh, helical springs first. Later on, we will move on to the design of other types of springs. Here, uh, we will concentrate only on the design of helical springs and design of uh, uh, the laminated or leaf springs. Okay, so the spring is basically an elastic member. Is it right? So that's why when you select the material for this uh, spring, uh, the helical spring, 
the material of the helical spin should have high fatigue strength high ductility high resilience and it should be quick resistant okay so these properties uh, must be possessed by a material uh, which is selected for the manufacturing of helical spins okay since the spins are subjected to uh, variable loads so it should have a high fatigue strength since it is an elastic member it should have high ductility and it is a strain energy storage member that's why it should have high resilience and it should also be creep resistant member okay it largely depends on the service for which they are used that's why uh, these uh, are classified as severe service helical springs average service or light service right severe service means uh, rapid continuous loading where the ratio of minimum to maximum load is one half or less like automotive wall springs okay when the spring is subjected to high rate of variable loads then it is uh, comes under severe service helical spring okay then like the springs used in the governors springs used in the automobile suspensions etc comes under average service which includes some stress range okay and not uh, like a severe service uh, it is subjected to only certain amount of variable loads right a light service includes the spring subjected to loads that are uh, static in nature right very infrequently vary so always the value of the load is uh, same throughout its functioning like uh, safety valve spring right so the springs are mostly made from the generally the springs are helical springs are uh, manufactured uh, from oil tempered carbon steels wires containing 0.6 to 0.7% carbon similarly 0.6 to 1% manganese okay so this is the composition of uh, uh, material generally used for the helical springs right so, so apart from this a magic wire uh, is also used for small springs right non ferrous materials like a phosphor branch beryllium copper monal metal brass etc may also be used in special cases so where uh, the special properties are required uh, like uh, fatigue resistance and the temperature resistance corrosion resistance etc okay right so when it comes to the the heat treatment of these uh, springs uh, helical springs are either uh, uh, cold formed or hot formed depending upon the size of the wire right so wires of small smile sizes generally less than 10 millimeters in diameter or usually wound uh, cold whereas the large size wires are wound in hot condition the strength of the wires varies with sizes smaller size wires uh, have greater strength less ductility due to the greater degree of cold working okay so these are all uh, the uh, the materials required or uh, the properties required for the materials used in the helical spin manufacturing similarly the manufacturing methods generally used for the manufacturing of helical spins okay so that's all for uh, today's session. So in, in the next session, we'll see the terminology of uh, uh, design of helical springs in detail manner. Later on, we'll see the design procedure to design a helical spring. Okay, so uh, let me have a quick look on uh, uh, these uh, topics. So, first one is the functions of uh, springs and later on uh, classification of springs and then the properties required 
for the materials of helical springs, the manufacturing methods used to manufacture helical springs, and uh, the different uh, materials used for the manufacturing of helical springs. Right. So these things we have uh, discussed in this session. Right. So in tomorrow's session, uh, we will continue uh, with the terminology of helical springs. Right. I hope uh, you understood. Okay. Thank you.